nukes, all loaded, 24 of them. The great thing about this truck is I can get seven nukes across the middle. So I know that when I see one line, it's sort of seven, 14, 21, 20, 24. But if I'm ever counting up and I lose track, it's easy to work out. All gone. This, this apiary now will, I won't ever be here again. As I say, next year, I'll probably be in the corner of that field over there, but I've still got another apiary down the bottom there with all my hives down there. So that's what I'm going to concentrate now quite a few Asian hornets around here as I showed you in the recent video they're just poking around doing their thing I'm gonna see if I can find the nest around here because if I can destroy it in the next couple of weeks that'll be really advantageous but you know it's a big area imagine this whole area this is just a small valley okay and it's probably in those poplar trees somewhere right at the top because they do tend to like poplar trees but saying that often it's in brambles now and there's a lot of brambles <laughs> so as you can imagine it's uh it's a bit of a needle in a haystack jog job in french they say comme un aiguille dans une botte de foin like a needle in a haystack and it really is so I'm off to take these nukes now to other apiaries because I've got other nukes to go to one of my main wintering nuke sites. So I've got a, I thought logically it'd be better if I could put these into the apiaries now rather than moving to one place and another place later on. Why not put them straight in the nuke yards? And it does take a little bit of stress off the colonies because there's, okay, there's maybe 18 in each apiary, but I've broken that large number down and I won't have to move them in the spring. And um, if I lose any others in that apiary that they're going to, it kind of already fills a spot. So I've got a couple of dead outs to remove as well that I haven't done yet because of like everything else, it's just time and uh, I don't have much of it. But we're all the same. We're all thinking we're over for the season, but we're all just still getting stuff done and it just seems never ending. The reason why I'm moving all these nukes now is because the weather is due to change today. And um, the reason why it's going to change is not so much it's going to change as in it'll never be nice again. It's just going to change as we're going to have a lot of rain today. And this time of year, when you suddenly start to get a lot of rain and the solar radiation gets to around the levels it is in late September, early October, if you have heavy rain, that's often when you can't get back in your apiaries safely. Now, when I mean back in my what I mean is I just don't want to get stuck. I just want to get in and get out. So I'm moving the nukes from here because this, as you imagine, is a very soft area prone to um, getting stuck and wheel spinning. So you can see already it's a little bit softer because we had rain the other week, but the weather we've had has been so good. I've just delayed it, but the rain is supposed to start today. So I'll get this one done and I'll get the nukes into those apiaries. So every apiary will be full. That I've been to and I think 21 will probably fill everything up and not give me enough space. I'll probably have some nukes left at the end of it I hope. I haven't really counted up but I'm going to be doing a tour of apiaries and stocking up, picking up hives on the replacement side or moving them at least so at least I can pick them up in the next few days, few weeks. So I've just brought four nukes to this apiary and immediately I walked in the apiary I knew this apiary was getting predated by Asian hornets, but it's only just started, so I'm not too worried. But the reason why I know is look at this. The bees are out the front on the landing spot. You can see them in their lines. They are patrolling for the hornets. They're defending their hive. Same here, look at that. See the hell they're jumpy at me. Same here. See them all in the line. This is what happens when you get an Asian hornet presence. And I looking up and down the row, I can see two or three. There's an Asian hornet there. That's a nuke I've just brought in. 
So they're going to have to learn it's around the back of the hive. There it is. See, the bees aren't happy with it, but they'll learn to defend it. See, it's almost, it's almost giving the bees a bit of a go to try and attack it because it wants to grab one, you see. This will actually stress the colony out completely. The annoying thing is, this is one of the only apiaries I haven't refilled my traps yet. And someone was asking me, Francis, what traps do I use? This is the ones I use from Vita Pharma called Vespa Catch. They're really well designed. They've got a little hole in the top there. You can see the hornets go in and you put a little bit of bait in there. That one obviously I've missed and I haven't emptied. It's a bit of an ecological disaster and I make no excuse. I should have emptied this out. This one obviously I emptied out earlier because I don't like to keep attracting the wrong sort of things. I want to obviously keep um, the hornets out of the apiary by monitoring the traps carefully and doing whatever I can and emptying them often. But you can see I've got the other traps to fill up. One on top of the hive there. I'm going to bring some more to this apiary as well because uh, I'm not happy with this. But this is absolutely indicative of what bees do. The hornets can't get in, but the bees are constantly out the front waiting and guarding. And that really pisses off the bees and it really pisses off the colony. As I said before, what we have here is just the tail end. Loads of the beekeepers in France, southern France, all into Spain now, Portugal have this problem all the time. But they're kind of probably given up talking about it. But it's just ideal for me to mention it because it's an ongoing issue. And we don't really know the best solution. Nothing is brilliant. So I didn't drive down here because this is already greasy and wet and I don't know whether I'd have got back up. I probably would. I wish I had a tractor here just to see. But if I do this, you can see how greasy that is. And as I say, it's a slippery slope. So I've only brought four nukes in here. There's now a full 18 nukes, 18 colonies in here. So that bodes well. Just on my way out, and I'll just show you, this is the nest I destroyed. The Asian hornet's nest I destroyed a few weeks ago. That's what's left of it. That was a starter nest, but it was still a fair size. But most of it fell on the ground when I killed it. But anyway, the job was done. But you can see, you kill one and there could be 10 more around somewhere in the hedgerows. You just, you just needle in a haystack, as I said before. And look at that lot of poplars up there. They love poplars. So um, we have a job on our hands, like everybody does. So we are progressing. Two more at this apron, sorry, three more here. One at the end there. Two, three, three more in this apron. So that makes another 18 complete. And I've got another apiary near this one. I've just dropped off two, two, two. And uh, I actually was at this apiary because there was some fruit in these trees the other week. And I closed off all the hives to give the owners a chance to pick the fruit. And I wanted to put the hornet doors back on, but as you can see, the bees have other ideas, but that's a really good bees having other ideas because it means they're strong. And that's what I like to see. So I've got one of the doors on, but not the other one. That's a common hornet there, you can see in front. Quite a few of them around this apiary, which isn't a problem. But it's interesting that it's the only apiary I'm seeing common hornets. So apiary number five. I do like this apiary. I've got some branches to cut back a little bit in the middle here. But there's still a lot of light gets in. And this is the one at the old dump I used to uh, just cleaned last week. 
so I have access to it now, but I'm going to come do some more cutting back with a chainsaw during the winter, but at least it's done. And when I cut it back more, I can actually get my truck up to this part. So this is completely full. So there's 20 hives in here. All is good. On to the next one. And then as you can hear, the rain has started. So I've got one way for you to get to, which can get really wet as well. So I'll be glad to get that in and out. Off we go, next one. So we're now at the fifth apiary. We're done, there's only three gone in here. It's a good apiary this. But you can see now the truck is full of hives to be cleaned out. So that's the next job for today and probably make a start, but it's pissing the rain. Glad I got done what I did when I could, but we're now up straight, so. So yes, it's that time of year where we are literally just going around collecting up feeders, washing them, scraping boxes, putting equipment away. I finished all of this this morning. So these are all clean. What we do is we, I've gone through each hive. They've all been cleaned out. If you can see there, we, um, with the blowtorch, we clean out. I've shown you that before one of my videos, but it's all been blowtorch and scorch. Any frames that were rubbish have been melted down. I had a whole truck full. This is the last six here. And obviously this is my five over five queen rearing a kit that I take back and clean as well. So it's all been scorched. It's all been cleaned. It all goes back in my shed down here, um, which I kind of use as my little barn store at home. And uh, it's a little bit of walking around, but I actually quite like coming down here of an evening. I've got electricity down here. It's only like a really weak supply but it works well. And it means I can just potter around and get all the hives stacked in. Won't bother opening that door, but it's knackered. But um, so you can see in here, I've got quite a big uh, store of hives. These will be all going out next year, I hope, because I'm going to try and keep as many nukes as I can. And there's a load of spare, spare nukes. What I, what I meant was when I said I'm going to keep as many nukes as I can, I'm not going to try and sell the nukes I have, unless I'm absolutely desperate, because I want to obviously get, I want to, every nuke you have that you save every year that you've made yourself is worth well more in real terms if it gives you honey in another split that year and maybe two splits and two crops of honey. So this is kind of a, a barn I had renovated. Notice the uh, barn owl box in the back there at the top. You can probably see that there. Never had a barn owl in it, but I, well, I've had a young one in it from my other barn owl box at the top of the house, but this is a, the wrong side. This is an, a west facing door, so I don't like it. So, the, But I've just had the young one in here for a while, but um, it's nice to have a barn where you can store stuff, you know? And I've got polystyrene eeks here by the lorry load, stuff like that. The kind of place you rush into, grab something, put something down and you come back again and it's all fallen over and classic beekeeper store. Feed is to be washed up, but at least they're in. They're not going green outside. So um, it's a perfect barn. It's only 20 meters square, but it actually does hold quite a bit. So that is kind of an exercise done where I've gone into the apiaries, taken out the old hives that were empty, replaced them with nukes. So the nukes have been distributed early. And now every apiary is full and we're going into the winter looking good. So I've still got lots of nukes to move around and the weather is actually pretty pants the next two days. So I'm just going to be cleaning up the workshop and stuff like that. But uh, better get these stacked in the shed as well. We're kind of running out of space, but the whole idea is everything is undercover and uh, it all is kind of being looked after. And it's amazing how much of a difference it does make when you look after your gear, because it lasts for years. Take care, speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.